right, so the application is looking pretty good so far. We've got all of the data that we have in our cribs.json file coming through here on the screen, but now we should put in a form so that the user can submit new listings. So the idea will be that we'll have a form up here at the top, and that way the user can put in the address and the price and all of the other details that go into one of these cards. So why don't we start by adding in the component for that form. So over here at the command line, let's just kill that process that's serving the application and let's generate a new component. So we'll do ng generate, we want a component and let's call it add listing form. Okay, so it looks like it got generated. Let's just double check in our editor and there we go, add listing form. So what we're going to do here is just paste in an already completed form. And the reason for this is that it's quite a large HTML file and I don't want to spend the time to type it all out here, but you can feel free to pause and copy it all out or you can just go to the repository for the course and you can copy it from there and paste it into your component. But what we'll do is we'll step through each line so that we can see what's going on. So here's the HTML for the form. Why don't we start at the top and just see what's going on. So right up here at the top, we've got this opening div and we're using some bootstrap classes to set up a panel. So this will just give us a nice box that we can set up our form in. And then the panel heading is add a listing. And then down here in the panel body, this is where we start to set up the form. So the first thing to take note of here is that we're using a regular form element, but we're using a couple things that are specific to Angular. So this is just a regular old HTML form element, but what we're putting on it is a new crib form template variable. So that's the first thing here. We denote a template variable with the hash and we're calling it new crib form. And then we're setting that to ng form. And when we do this, when we set up a template variable and then we assign it to ng form, what that does is it sets up a top level form group for this form element. So when a form is set up to be an Angular specific form like we're doing here, we get all sorts of capabilities and benefits with it. So for example, we can track whether the form is valid and we can also do things like get the individual values from the input elements in the form. So if you've ever built a form with something like jQuery, for example, you would have had to be explicit about taking values out of the input element. You'd have to set up some JavaScript so that you could capture the values out of each element, and then you could manipulate them afterwards however you like. Now with Angular's forms, we can actually do that just by taking the values that are coming from the template variable here. And you can see an example of this in our ng submit. So we're taking the value that comes from new crib form, and those are going to be all of the values that exist on each of the input elements. Now what's happening here with ng submit is this is an event binding. So just like we saw earlier with the click that we passed into the parentheses, we're doing a similar thing here except the event that we're listening for is ng submit. And essentially what that means is that we're just looking for when the form gets submitted. So when the submit button gets clicked, we're going to call this method here which is on crib submit. Now we've still got to create this method in our component class and we'll see that in just a little while. And again, what we're passing into this method here are the values that come from the elements within our form. And we just access them this way, new crib form dot value. So let's take a look at the individual inputs here. The very first thing to notice here is that we've got this ng model directive that we're marking on any of the inputs that we want to be part of this form. And naturally, that would just be all of the inputs and text areas and all of the form elements that exist within this form group. When we mark it with ng model, essentially what we're saying is that this input element should be part of the form group and it should get the capabilities that come along with being a part of this form. One of the capabilities is that we're able to get the value from this input element right here from our new crib form template variable. And the way that we identify this particular element here is with its name. So when we pass in the values to our onCribSubmit method, what we're going to find is that we get an object. This value here is going to be an object and one of the keys is going to be address. And that address key is going to have a value of whatever we've put into this element. So we've got a similar thing going on down here with the price input. So we've got a name of price and we've put ng model on it to mark it as being part of the form. And similarly down here for our select element, we've got ng model, and this one has a name of type. 
Now what you'll notice down here is that we've got a single option element within our select. Now traditionally with HTML select elements, you would provide an option element for each of the items that you want to be in that list. But here we're taking advantage of Angular's repeater, so the ng4 repeater. We're using that to just have a single option element and then template out a set of values that are in a collection. And the collection that we're using in this case is called property types. So we've got to initialize this property types array within our component class, and again, we'll do that in just a second. So coming down, we've also got a text area, and this is for the description, and we've got ng model on that again. We've also got the number of beds and the number of bathrooms, and then the area. The last thing that we'll take a look at here is this submit button that we've got down here at the bottom. So this is our add button. This is what we click when we want to submit the form, and we're giving it a type of submit. And because it's got a type of submit and it's within our form elements, it's going to be recognized as the thing that should trigger the ng submit event. So basically how it works is when we have a form and we have a submit button within it, that submit button is going to be used by default to trigger this event. Now one last thing to note here is that we've got this attribute called required, which we're putting on all of our inputs. And this is just from HTML5. This isn't an Angular 2 specific thing. It's actually standard HTML5. And what it does is it says there has to be some value within this field before the form can be submitted. So the user won't be able to submit the form unless they have a value there. And this is just kind of a quick and dirty way of doing validation for the form. With Angular's forms, we can do a lot more than just check to see that values exist in each of the inputs. We can also do things like set a minimum length for a field or require that it be of a certain type. And there are a lot of different options, but we're just going to take the easy case now and use the HTML5 required attribute. There will be a lot more material on AngularCast about how to do form validation specifically. All right, so this is our HTML for the form. Let's save that and let's go over here to our components and let's just take a look at what's happening. Right now, this is just a standard component class. What we can do very quickly here is let's just put in that method that's called when the form gets submitted. And in the template, we've called that on crib submit. And we're taking in some data from that, which will be the form values. And let's just log that to the console for now. And we can just say that we're not returning anything from this method. All right, so the selector for this component is up here. It's app add listing form. Let's copy that, and we're going to need to use it over here in our app component HTML. Let's place it just above the crib listing. And because we use the Angular CLI to generate this component, if we look over here in our app module, we've got that listing form component already coming through in our declarations. Okay, so let's check this out in the browser. We'll have to go back over to the terminal and serve the application again. So it's ng serve. And then let's check it out. All right, cool, so our form is coming through. We've got our address, price, and so on. One thing that we didn't do yet is we didn't put an array in place with property types. So right now there are no property types coming through in this dropdown, but let's go back and we'll implement that quickly. So back over in our component class, let's say that we want a member called property types, and we know we want that to be an array, so we'll type hint it as an array, and we know that we're going to have strings in it, so we'll say that each of the elements is going to be a string. And then we'll set that equal to an array, and let's put some values in there. So we'll want house and condo, and let's just put duplex as well. Okay, so let's save this, and we'll see if that works now. So over in our property type dropdown, there are the different types of properties. So for now, what we're doing in the submission again is we're just logging the data to the console. So let's see if we get that. Let's pop open the console. It's going to be option command I on the Mac. And let's put in an address. We'll do one, two, three, any street. And it's gonna be a house. So after we hit add, we've got the object coming through that comes from the form. And so once again, all of the keys and values here that are within this object, those come from our form, and specifically, they come from new crib form dot value. So this value property here is an object, the object that we just saw in the console, and it's got keys and values for each of the input elements and text area elements and anything else that would be a form element within our form here. 
All right, so we've got the HTML for our form in place. We've also got some proof that the form works to some extent because we're able to log something to the console after we put in values for it. The next thing that we're going to take a look at is how to get the data that's in the form here down into a new crib card.